Bismillahirrahmanirrahim everybody. Uh, welcome to the course of communication skills. Today it is the third lecture on the basic principles of effective communication. I am Muhammad Asif Khan, lecturer in the Department of English, Ohad University of Science and Technology. In today's lecture, we will try to understand uh, how we could use fourth and fifth principle of effective communication in uh, our daily usage. Now, first of all, before we start, I will just uh, show you the agenda of today's discussion. As I told you earlier, that uh, in today's lecture, we will try to understand fourth and fifth principle of communication. So first of all, I will define the first principle to you, and then I will give you some examples. Uh, in the same way, I will explain the fifth principle to you, that is the principle of uh, completeness. And after that, uh, I will give one or two examples, so that you can get uh, the complete understanding of this very concept. So let's uh, move towards uh, and the overall uh, review of uh, this very lecture, that is uh, that basically in these lectures we are studying uh, the seven C's of effective communication or we are studying the seven principles. As you already know and we discussed in the first lecture along with the introduction of uh, these basic principles, the first principle of effectiveness and the second principle uh, of effective communication is the principle of plan. After that, uh, we have uh, the principle of correctness. Our uh, first principle was discussed in the first lecture, and the second and third was uh, discussed in second lecture of uh, seven C's. And in today's lecture, we are going to discuss uh, uh, the fourth and fifth principle. That is uh, the principle of greatness and the principle of completeness. After uh, that. Inshallah, in the next lecture, we will study the principle of copiousness and the principle of coherence. So, let's start uh, and let's move towards uh, the first uh, principle that we are going to discuss in this lecture, and that is the principle of concreteness. Concreteness means, and concreteness stands for, that when we are composing or when we are sending some message, we should remain specific instead of giving a journal uh, information or uh, instead of including journal things in our lecture, we should remain focused on the specific, definite and exact details of the message so that our message uh, does not get uh, ambiguous. So, the principle of concreteness it signifies that uh, when we deliver a message, the message should be clear and particular. Another important thing, or another way to define the same thing, is that uh, when we want to state, or when we want to define something, or when we want to pronounce something in communication. Our message should remain to the point, specific, definite, and clear. So these are the things uh, which we should uh, include when we are composing or when we are uh, forming the message. And we should uh, try to avoid making our message journal or unclear. So if the message will be obvious and uh, it has uh, the capacity that the person who is uh, listening to this message he is uh, he can easily understand or comprehend that very message and uh, the message is very much lucid and unambiguous it means that the composer or the sender is using the principle of completeness another way to uh, use this principle is that uh, we should include and we should uh, uh, keep in our mind when we are composing message uh, to include facts and figures 
and uh, I tell you that if you include facts and figures in your message, uh, it will strengthen the message of the idea which you are communicating to the receiver. It will reinforce your thoughts. It will reinforce what you want to convey to the sender. And it will, uh, these facts and figures will support uh, the concept uh, which you want to send to the sender. So, uh, this is the basic introduction of the principle of uh, concreteness. Now, let's move towards uh, another slide. And uh, when you talk uh, uh, to someone, uh, for example, in uh, business communication, when you are talking to the customer or the client, we should always use facts and figures that makes the communication more and more clear. If you include facts and figures and you uh, keep yourself uh, away from using general or in irrelevant information, this type of communication gives uh, that authenticity to your communication that uh, the receiver starts believing you and he starts trusting your message. So, always try to use facts and figures instead of generate a general type of information. As I already told you that if your message will be clear, having no ambiguousness and uh, you are giving a plain information, you are giving clear, obvious information and remaining specific instead of going towards the journal message, it will minimize or there will be zero chance of misinterpretation. What do I mean by misinterpretation? It means that the receiver will not misread he will not go into misconceptions or he will not get false impressions from your message. It will be very much clear. So it reduces when you are using facts and figures and you are clear and specific in your message. It will reduce the probability or the chance of misunderstanding of the message. So, misunderstanding of the words or the vocabulary or the language which you are using, it creates a lot of problems for both parties, both sender and receiver. And it can cause a very big mistrust. It creates a wide gap between uh, the customer and the seller. Now let's move towards the another slide and I will further explain the concept to you that uh, how can we uh, make uh, our message uh, more and more concrete. There are two guidelines uh, uh, which will help uh, the composer of the message uh, to, to be more concrete. And as I already described to you that uh, when you are composing message, you should use specific facts and figures. Support your message with data. Include records and statistics. That will, that will be very much helpful and it will create a good impact on the receiver of the message. And it will help you to achieve uh, the target of uh, communicating the right thing to the sender. So if you are uh, including information, uh, that very data, or you are supporting your your uh, message with uh, with documentary uh, or documented report, that will be very helpful, and it will help uh, the the person who is uh, on the receiving end to, to decide that uh, sender uh, is uh, having uh, is on the positive side 
another suggestion or another guideline is that you should pick up or select uh, uh, image building boards that uh, makes the communication more and more clear. So uh, let's move uh, towards the first example and uh, the example uh, in which first of all I will give you the journal statement about a student. For example, if I am telling you about a student that he is very intelligent student of class and uh, he stood first in the class. This is the journal information. But if I give you, instead of using uh, uh, he pronouns, I am using the name Ali's GPA and the GPA is uh, the exact uh, count of the intelligence IQ level Ali's GPA in BSc Electrical Engineering Again, I am putting here the session, exact session, giving you the exact facts and figures, uh, and I am giving you the documentary report. So I am supporting myself for uh, my message with statistics, reports, data, facts and figures. And Ali scored 3.95 out of 4. So he stood first in the class. In this very message, which is having complete information, all things are included about Ali, and we are having that which degree he is doing, uh, which session he appeared in the exam, and what are the exact scores he scored in his class. So in this way, we can give very exact information to the receiver. So. I hope that uh, from this uh, simple example, you will uh, uh, get uh, the better understanding of the concept. Let's move towards another example. This example I have taken from uh, the, the business point of view, in which uh, the, the sales personnel, uh, they, they got together uh, and uh, they are having a meeting. And in which, uh, in this meeting, they are communicating about their sales, that what sales they achieve quarterly or annually, what are the results. So this type of communication will consist of uh, a presentation, sales presentation, and it will also uh, include uh, the facts and figures about the sales, that the what targets they actually achieved uh, during this uh, time period. So basically uh, sales meetings, any organization or company in, in this in these type of meetings uh, sales personnel basically presents uh, their, their facts and figures. In this way they are using the, the basic principle of uh, concreteness and in this way uh, they are actually making uh, their message more and more clear. Now let's move towards another principle and that is the principle of completeness very much connected to the first principle. Uh, we can't study these very things in isolation. As I told you, all these principles together make the communication effective. So uh, principle of completeness uh, stands for that uh, when we communicate, we should uh, communicate a complete message to be effective. If uh, the message receiver, either listener or reader, he, he desires complete information to their questions, then we will say that, uh, that he is, uh, it means that message is not completely conveyed. So a message is said to be complete when the recipient or the receiver of the message receives all important uh, information. It means that uh, the message uh, has all those details and uh, we need not to ask anything about it. It also consists of uh, a call to action principle. I will uh, explain you uh, this very principle in the later example, but here I just want to tell you that uh, there is a statement that is specifically meant for, for receiving immediate response from the receiver. When the receiver uh, reads this message or he receives this message, he instantly responds. It is designed in this way. 
the facts and figures and the message are also part of it. Yeah, it means that it, this very principle is connected with the last one. So now let's move uh, towards uh, uh, the detail of uh, this principle. And uh, I will suggest you one important thing in this slide. It will be very helpful to you when you are, especially when you are composing this message. You can easily achieve uh, this principle. So when the message uh, is uh, more complex uh, or uh, what I can uh, say that uh, when the message is uh, more comprehensive uh, instead of saying that it is complex I say it's more comprehensive so sender sometimes require additional information or it needs that uh, and that we should uh, explain it or elaborate it uh, uh, further so that uh, on the other end audience or receivers who have uh, no doubt that what is uh, uh, what uh, the, the sender wants to say. The message should be composed in such a way that it has no uh, no uncertainty or uh, it does not uh, create distrust in the mind of audience or receivers. So uh, I want to tell you that uh, as I have written there that five W's it is one of the techniques uh, uh, which uh, if we use uh, in uh, in the message uh, and uh, the message includes or it comprised of uh, these uh, these five W's uh, I, I assure you that uh, uh, you can very easily achieve uh, the principle of completeness so now let's move toward the five W's we are already well aware of uh, the five W's and we often use these uh, five W's in the interrogative uh, questions. But basically, we can uh, uh, make uh, a very complete message, message by including these five W's in our message. The five question method is uh, especially very important. Uh, and uh, it is very helpful when you are uh, composing requests or when you are uh, writing down announcements when we are doing some announcements if we keep in our mind uh, these five W's these are really very helpful so in requests, announcements or other informative messages uh, these five W's are very important and I, I will give you one example if you want to compose uh, an order uh, for some goods uh, it will be very clear uh, if you include uh, the questions like uh, I have written for you here. For example, what you want. And here I am using uh, five W's. And that first question is what you want. When you need it. And the third question is where it is to be sent. What is the address. In this way, we can include the other W questions. And it will really help you to include all the details. And I, I guarantee you that uh, your message will be very complete. I will give you one another uh, uh, example of uh, of the completeness of the message, and, and that is that, uh, for example, uh, if we assume that uh, uh, a person is working in a multinational firm or company, and uh, he is dealing uh, with goods like uh, like computers. And one of his uh, uh, major clients, uh, he wants uh, to have uh, detailed technical information about the RAM. Uh, because he wants to transfer and he wants to pass on that very information to the end users. So in case uh, employer of that multinational company, he, he provides him the com complete information in uh, a short duration of time. Instead of uh, uh, giving that information, if he includes, if it is possible for him, and he includes some some additional information, uh, which uh, which he thinks that he, uh, the client is not knowing, it will not only keep uh, uh, the excellent uh, business relation with him, it will generate further trust uh, between uh, between the client. Uh, and, and the sale. So I, I want to 
and tell you that uh, in this way, the sender and the receiver, uh, they develop a, a relation of trust. Otherwise, a person who is, uh, who is trying to get information for you because he has to pass that information to his, uh, his customers, if you are not timely and uh, you are not completely providing the information to that person, he will switch uh, to another company. So, uh, that is uh, one of the examples. Another example of completeness uh, is that, for example, nowadays uh, online shopping, shopping is uh, commonly we see that people are doing online shopping and uh, on those websites, they are, uh, who are selling those uh, products, they give you detailed information and that information is complete. For example, if you are buying some uh, garments, you will see that uh, they will give you the complete information about the fabric, about the stuff or material they are using, including that we will give you the complete range of their colors. Measurements, you will, you will see uh, the, the detailed information of size and the different dimensions uh, uh, they have, uh, uh, dimensions of the measurements they have. In addition to that, we will give you the further traits and qualities uh, of uh, the things which they are selling. Along with that, you will see the detailed information of the price. Uh, including the additional charges uh, uh, they are uh, uh, charging you people. So all these informations are included in that very message. So it also, uh, we, we can also call it uh, calls to action features. So this message has calls to action features. It means that the customer, he can uh, buy that very product by pressing the buy option. He just uh, selects uh, all these uh, uh, details and press the buy button and, uh, and uh, he instantly buy the products. So in this very message, which, uh, which is a written message from uh, that very site, they, they have used uh, uh, the the principle of completeness uh, with their readers or the audience. So now let's uh, move towards uh, the conclusion of uh, the last principle, and that is uh, that uh, the, the sender must provide the receiver all important uh, information uh, as uh, requested by the receiver, and he reply uh, to all the questions. Uh, very carefully, uh, which are being asked by the receiver. Uh, another important thing is that uh, he should provide, uh, if he has uh, some additional information, he should include that in, uh, that information in his message, uh, even if it is uh, uh, not uh, very much required. But if uh, the sender thinks that uh, this information is necessary. Uh, he should pr provide that uh, uh, that very information because it will maintain the good, good relation between sender and receiver. So th that is the end of uh, today's lecture. Uh, thanks for listening passionately, and I hope that uh, you have uh, now better understanding of these two principles. So see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much.